Hello, my name is Tessa Juvonen, and in this video, we'll have a look on and the new advanced capabilities which we are gradually rolling out with the Card Designer++ plus plus or the Advanced Card Designer capabilities within the Viva connection. Now, the first version, what we're rolling out is pretty, pretty rough, um, and we will have a advanced or more modified scenarios uh, coming uh, in the phase two. I will show the phase two preview uh, as part of the demo as well, but let's first have a look on the first initial uh, scenario um, and how it works like, how you can enable that within your tenant and what you can do with the new API support within the, craft, uh, within the card designer. So let's jump right into it. Good. First of all, you can see that I'm in my custom tenant. Uh, in this tenant, we have already enabled uh, the Viva Connection dashboard or the baseline setup is, is available. I don't have any dashboards available here because we're going to create that using then the custom uh, advanced uh, features within our uh, card designer uh, card designer uh, capability. Now, to be able to get those the capabilities available, we actually need to use the latest version or almost the latest version, uh, the November or December release 2023 version of the SharePoint Online PowerShell. You can easily check this by doing a get module. Uh, in my case, uh, let's do list available and name being uh, SharePoint. If you don't have the SharePoint module available, uh, oh, where's, there we go, uh, then you will need to install the latest version. So in my case, the version is uh, uh, 23.322, uh, which was released in the 30th, 10th of uh, December. Uh, 2023. The pre one previous version actually works as well, um, but it should be the relatively new version, so you're able to enable uh, this feature because it requires a one-time execution of a certain command line in a tenant level. Now, how do we do that? Uh, let's first have a look on how it looks like when it's not enabled. So let me go to the man uh, Manage Viva Connection. We'll put code in the dashboard. And let me edit uh, the dashboard and I can actually start uh, the card designer in here and I can uh, start modifying the card designer uh, capability. So in here, you can actually see uh, this message which is saying advanced features have not been enabled by the administrator. And this actually means that the tenant level switch is not yet enabled. So therefore you cannot actually use the advanced uh, capabilities which would be supporting of, for example, hitting the graph APIs and getting information in the context of the user. Now let's actually change this. Uh, so let me go republish uh, so we can reload the page. Let me go back in the PowerShell line. Uh, let's go here and if we do get SPO tenant, we can actually see that uh, property uh, which is is data. Oh, it's data access in card designer enabled and in my case that's currently false and then that means that the, the API level execution is not yet working properly. Now let's actually flip that. Uh, so let's do set uh, uh, set SPO tenant and is data access enabled and let's put this one in true. And this one will then enable uh, the advanced API scenarios. Now, there's a few other things which we need to do here as well. So by default in a tenant, uh, you do not have an app catalog. App catalog is needed uh, for this functionality to work. And then you need to grant the needed permissions uh, for the card designer to depending on the APIs which are being uh, used. If you're using a SharePoint framework solutions, you might have already granted some permissions. Uh, if not, then you need to explicitly go and grant those permissions for the SharePoint object. Let's have a look on how this actually works in practice. So first of all, um, what we wanted to go and double check that our app catalog exists. Uh, so let me go to the advanced, uh, advanced view or administrative center. In the admin center, I will go show all. I will click the SharePoint on the left menu. Let's zoom a bit. And that will open up the SharePoint admin UI. A lot of, lot of settings in the Microsoft 365, but this is powered by the SharePoint. Viva connection is powered by the SharePoint. So therefore it is in the SharePoint admin UI. I will also need to go uh, to the more features and then I'm going to click the open in apps. Uh, if the app catalog is not yet created, it's going to actually start the creation of the app catalog. Now, in my case, the app catalog already exists. Uh, so that's basically confirming that everything is okay in here. 
Now, the one other thing uh, we need to also double check is to make sure that we have the needed Azure AD level permission uh, management options. And this is something what you can do uh, by going to this API access page. So when you go to this page, uh, this page will create the needed Azure AD uh, app registration information or alternatively when you're deploying your first SharePoint framework solution. Now, in this tenant, we don't have any SharePoint framework solutions available. So therefore, we can go to this page and it will actually create the registration entries to our Entra ID uh, portal. What's that again? Okay, let's have a look on that as well. So let me go to the admin center and let me click all admin centers and I want to go to Microsoft Entra, also known as Azure AD. And that's going to show me then the Entra admin UI. And in the Entra admin UI, I want to extend the applications view and then I'm going to extend app registrations. And this is basically listing all of the different app registrations which we have within the tenant. And I will need to go to all applications and then I can actually see these two fellows uh, now created and these are only created after you go to that app API page. So SharePoint automatically creates them. These are being basically used by managing the permissions within your SharePoint framework solution. So if a SharePoint framework solution, as an example, requests permissions to the mails and read, read and write to the mail access, this is the Azure AD registration entry, which will be granted to permissions so that whenever SharePoint framework solution is executed, these permissions apply for that execution. Now, the card designer will actually use the same settings. Uh, so if we now need to get access, for example, on email information, these are the application registration where we need to grant the permission. Now, depending on what we're trying, planning to do, uh, let's actually have a look on that as well. So we're not going to modify the permissions yet, but let's go to the dashboard. So now if I refresh the dashboard, if I now go to the edit mode, if I now go to the uh, edit card mode, we can actually see that we have advanced uh, settings available here. So in the card designer, in the quick view layout of data, the data source selection has multiple options now available. And these are pretty, pretty cool stuff. So you can actually define still your own data, which would be static information shown in the card in the quick view, or you can call a SharePoint API, or you can call a Microsoft Graph API. So as long as we have the right permissions again granted, we can then use just this UI lay layout to define that graph API call, which we will then use for rendering the UX uh, and the card itself. So let's actually do that. So let's first go and, and modify this card a bit. Uh, so let's let's make this a description is fine. Let's call this my latest uh, or my upcoming uh, meetings. That's actually a pretty cool one. Uh, let's add a icon. Let's change the icon. Do we have something like calendar? Yes, we do. So let's actually do, for example, that one and select that one. And then we can say my events and my my next meetings and then we need to define what happens when we click the card we want to show the quick view and then we need to define what happens when we click the button so i will actually say uh, let's make, make a text of events and then show the quick view as well so that will then open up the quick view when you're clicking at the button or whenever we are clicking anything within the uh, within the card Let's double check that everything is fine. Title my coming emails, do, 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 do. all good, all good. Let's click apply. So now we can see the card being modified with the new settings. So that's good. The next step is then to modify this to use the Craft API. <clears throat> now, this is um, a bit of a rough at the moment. So we're looking into having a bit more modified and optimized experience for providing the templates and doing the, uh, doing the templates and data association. Right now, what we can do uh, is that we can, of course, use always the card design, adaptive card designer to define uh, what kind of layouts we're, what we're using. So if I change here to be a Viva connection, and then I'm going to copy paste uh, my events quick view to be available and let me paste that one in the payload editor, we can actually see what we're planning to show within the card. Uh, so this is basically now uh, designed uh, previously uh, with the nice image, and then we're listing all of the incoming uh, events from the calendar using the Graph API. So we're hitting the Graph API, getting the events, and then rendering those out within the, within the repeater, uh, within the adaptive card.
So that's how it's going to look like. Let's go back on the dashboard. Uh, we can then paste in the same card in here. And we could actually already apply, uh, but it wouldn't make the functionality dynamic. And that's now really the challenge uh, because we need to make sure that it's dynamic and it's able to hit that endpoint. Now, there's a few ways of doing this and the timing isn't really that uh, uh, important. But what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to go to the app registration. And in my case, I just created this tenant. So there's no permissions granted uh, yet. For this, uh, for this application and this app registration. So let me go to the API permissions. I'm gonna use the Entra ID to add a permission. And I'm gonna use uh, the calendar read. So I'm gonna go to the Microsoft Graph permissions and I'm gonna use delegated permissions because we're gonna access the user's information. And then what we're looking into doing is calendars. And in the calendars, uh, what we're looking into doing is basically granting the calendars read permission. And because it's a delegated permission, it means that it's not just for the app, it's the permission joined with the user and the application. So basically the user can only access the calendar entries which the user has permissions. So the app experience can only do that as well. So let me actually then add the permission. And then what we want to do here is that we want to grant admin consent uh, for that one. So that means that it's being then granted across the tenant to be used as a delegated permission. Right now we can see that admin consent has not been yet done. So if we do that, let me grant that. Ooh, that was the status where it's actually showing that it's not yet done. And now it's granted for the whole tenant. Now, depending again on your tenant, you might have granted some permissions already for, for SPFX solution. Um, they would be visible in here. Those permissions are then available for card designer as well. Now in the SharePoint Admin Center, if we go on the API access, we can also double check this from here. Uh, we cannot grant those permissions in here unless they're being requested with SharePoint Framework but we can see the situation of the granted permissions. So now in the API access page, as we're loading the page, we can see that the calendar read has been granted as an organization wide permission. Cool. So now we can hit the endpoint in the Microsoft Graph and let's actually make that happen. So what I'm going to do is do here is that we're going to change the data source to be Microsoft Graph. And then we need to provide the actual URL of the endpoint, which we're going to hit uh, for that information. And in our case, we're going to hit V1 endpoint. And let me get uh, the details from here, and I'm going to paste it in here. Now we're going to hit V1 me events, and we're going to take five, and we're going to select certain uh, fields directly from that endpoint. Now, we can use, of course, Microsoft Graph Explorer to define uh, the right APIs and understand what's the permissions and what's the rendering. And as I click the test, you can actually say that we get some data outputs uh, directly from the calendar. And that means that it's actually working. You would get an exception and information. You would get something like cannot make the requests uh, uh, to Microsoft Graph as the SharePoint Online Extensibility Web Application Principle is not configured to consent to. And that would actually mean that you're missing that permission registration from here, or you would miss it. And, and it's visible, obviously, in the API as well. So now in our case, we were able to hit the endpoint. We're getting results based on that URL entry of what was happening. And then that means that I can click apply. And what's actually really cool about hitting the apply is that we actually have now a centralized level control for this application. So before showing that live, if I now go to manage app, we can actually see the same card or same designer as a definition to be available within my app catalog. And this is so that there's this admin level control. So administrator can control, is this available? Is it not available? And they can pull it if needed directly from the app catalog. So there's the centralized governance still available even though the end users or the designer can still create uh, those experiences. Of course, administrator needed to approve this feature to be available as the first step. Now let's uh, go in here. Let's go to uh, republish uh, and see that it's working properly. Uh, so we are listing uh, all of my upcoming events. We did say that if we click the card or we click the events button, we are actually seeing the upcoming events uh, for this particular user. So we can see upcoming events, SLD meeting, engineering task. And in here, I can even click the, the, the link and it will actually open up that meeting directly from Outlook because again, that's a deep link information which is available for Outlook within 
uh, within that calendar entry. That was engineering tasks and of course the deep linking works that if I need to know details about Zoom with Melissa or connect to the meeting, I can easily do that by moving into Outlook side and this works in the mobile side as well. Um, and then I can uh, join on that meeting and whatever meeting is all about. So that's actually really cool. So now we were able to create this really cool craft powered experience just by uh, using the card designer in the UX um, and then granting the right permissions obviously given that the functionality is enabled in a tenant level. Now, one thing to notice, uh, we're looking into uh, having a bit more polished uh, experience here. Uh, so here's an upcoming design uh, UIs uh, for the card designer. So this is coming as a phase two for the card designer. So you can do a live preview on what are you defining. You can actually more efficiently see uh, the endpoints. You have more space within as you're defining the template and hitting the endpoint and the data endpoint. And this is a live preview on the middle as well. This will be rolling out uh, as a phase two in early 2024 and we're further looking into imp uh, simplifying this process uh, as needed. Cool. That's a quick review uh, on the Card Designer uh, Plus Plus or card design, Advanced Card Designer capabilities, which is now starting to support API level uh, operations. Those are one endpoint API calls. So basically I get API calls for the Card Designer. You cannot do a additional API hops based on a selected item. So that is currently not yet, at least for now, available. Potentially in the future, depending on the interest and the demand, we're looking into making this much more uh, sophisticated with multiple API call supports as needed. But that's the current implementation, the, phase, the first phase uh, of making the card designer a dynamic based on the graph APIs or SharePoint API calls. Mm -hmm.